Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Donna, and here is her story. Hey, Ollie. Thank you for what you're doing to help survivors of narcissists. I made a donation on PayPal and wanted to share a warning to parents who survived having a narcissistic parent only to lose their own child to the narcissist. It's okay to use my first name, Donna. Here's my story. The most evil thing my narcissist mother ever did to destroy my daughter's life. She couldn't destroy me, so she destroyed my daughter. Bob Dylan had it right when he said, You've thrown the worst fear that you can ever that can ever be hurled. Bring fear to bring children into the world. I married the first man who asked me at age seventeen in order to escape the horrific abuse at home. I graduated high school and had a good job working as a secretary. I wanted I wanted to go to college and had been accepted to at a good school. My grandfather drove me to take my entrance exams in a blizzard by deflating his tires for more traction. I did very well on the exams. I had a job lined up working in the college cafeteria to pay my tuition. Everything was all set. All I needed was $16 a week for the bus to get back and forth to school. I couldn't afford to live on campus. My mother refused to give me the $16 a week. I had been working and paying her to live there, even though she was collecting welfare and didn't tell them I was working and paying her. She could have continued to collect welfare as long as I was in school, but she got greedy and wanted me to work full time so she could get more money out of me. When I realized I could not go to college, I decided to get married so I could get out there. She told me I couldn't leave until I was 21 unless I got married. I didn't know if that was true, but at the time I believed it and couldn't imagine spending four more years living with her, so, and so I got married. Depending on the state, the latest they can force you to live there, the latest in any state in the United States, is 18. After 18, they can't tell you shit. And in some states, it's even before that. It's as early as 16 or 15. But in most states, after 18, they can't tell you shit. The man I married became as toxic as my mother once he got me pregnant. He couldn't keep a job. We got kicked out of an apartment because the landlord caught him stealing things from the basement. I had a very good civil service job by then, working with mentally disabled children. One of the benefits was free college tuition if I attended a state college. I enrolled in college while working full time. I made the dean's list and was getting straight A's. I paid my husband's mother to babysit my daughter while I was at work. My husband kept telling me I was a bad mother because I should stay home with my daughter because he couldn't keep a job. Someone had to work to pay the bills. He said his mother told him I would meet a man in college and leave him. But that isn't why I was going to college. And you notice this. Whether it was with your mother or his mother or him. Okay. Nobody wanted you to leave because they all were benefiting off of you. The narcissist never will let you go when they're benefiting from you. And when you cut off their benefits is when they get real nasty. And they do things like come after your children. I was doing it so we could make more money, not meet someone else and leave them. But he kept insisting I quit school. I kept insisting it was the best thing for us to, for me to make more money. He wanted me to pretend that he had left me so I could go on welfare. But, it, but I never wanted to live on welfare again. They all want to just be fucking lazy and have somebody give them shit. See, this is what it is with the narcissist, man. Whether personally, politically... They want to be given things. They want to be given things off of other people's labor. That's the narcissist. They want to benefit off the labor of others. They are lazy sloths. Manipulative, calculating, lying, abusive 
sloths. Just benefiting off the backs of others. And God forbid when you cut them from their benefit. I wanted my daughter to have a better life than I did. I had been bullied for being a welfare bum all my life. And I did not want my child to suffer that abuse. I read every book I could get my hands on to raise my baby right. Except to get away from the toxic people in your life. All the baby books in the world and advice is going to do you no good if you're going to live amongst toxicity, which it seems like is what you did. I was determined to be a good mother. I loved her so much. I wanted to be able to hold her head up high and not be a welfare bum like I was. He just didn't get it. He thought I was stupid and thought, and I thought he was stupid. And he thought you were stupid because you didn't want to game the system. Then I caught him cheating on me with my best friend. Oh, some best friend, huh? More toxicity you're bringing into your life. She was coming to our apartment while I was at work and he was unemployed. She kept leaving her things there like she wanted me to know she had been there. She left her cigarette case there. Her cigarette butts were in my ashtray. He was withholding sex from me. He was only interested in her. I was devastated and didn't know what to do. I came home from work one day and no one was there. My daughter's bedroom was empty. All the furniture was gone. I immediately drove to his mother's house, and he and my daughter had moved in there. He said he wanted a divorce, and he wanted custody of my daughter. My entire world crashed down around me. I didn't know what to do. I went back home to empty my apart to my empty apartment and cried. I couldn't find my cat. Then I found her dead. Her body was all swollen. I think she was poisoned. poisoned. I buried her in the backyard. I was so depressed, all I could do was cry. Then I got an eviction notice. My husband had purchased the house I was renting, and he was throwing me out. Everything was in his name, even my car. He wiped out our bank accounts. I called my mother and explained the situation to her. She said I could move in with her as long as I paid rent, so I did. I hired a lawyer to get my daughter back. The lawyer told me to pick her up for a visit and not bring her back. He said he could handle it from there. I told my mother what the lawyer said, and she said I could not bring my daughter to her house because she did not want any trouble. I was frantic, so I tried to find a furnished apartment, but there was nothing available. I didn't have any credit in my name because everything was in his name, and he wiped out the bank accounts. Then he tried to take my car away from me because it was in his name, even though he was unemployed and I paid for it. I broke into my old apartment when he wasn't there and stole the title to my car. He had his own car. I forged his signature on the title to put it in my name. It was my car, and I had paid for it. To punish me, he put sugar in my gas tank to kill my engine. I paid a mechanic to put a used engine from a junkyard in my car, and I put a locking gas cap on it. I needed, to get my, I needed my car to get to work. All I had left was my job. I needed to keep it. In the meantime, I confided to a male friend at work what was going on and how I needed a place to live so I could get my daughter back. He said he had a camper that I could live in until I found a place. So I lived in his camper at a campground and set up a tent, which I filled with the furniture that, found, that I found at yard sales until I had enough to furnish, to furnish an apartment. I finally found an apartment and got custody of my daughter in the divorce. My ex got visitation rights, and I never tried to come between him and our daughter. One day, when I went to pick up my daughter at the house he had evicted me from, he answered the door totally nude. I freaked out and ran away. Turns out my best friend who had been living with him had left him, and he thought he was answering the door in the nude to make me take him back. That wasn't going to happen. Fast forward, I remarried and had a son with my new husband. My daughter was a teenager and old enough to work. My mother started getting job applications for her and telling her to move in with her. Now she wants her to move in with her so she can destroy you. I wanted my daughter to go to college. My mother wanted her to get a job and give her all the money and give all her money to her. Again. Again. Just another benefit. When you cut them from there, they're going to come after your children. 
My mother's youngest brother, who was mentally retarded and an alcoholic, was living with her. How could you be retarded and alcoholic? How does a mentally retarded person get access to alcohol? Holy fuck. It's like slavery or something. He was basically her slave. She gave him a list of chores to do each day. One day he got drunk and something happened that made her kick him out. He came to my house drunk, begging me to take him in. Then he started saying how beautiful my daughter was and he was creeping me out. He was staring at my daughter with lust in his eyes, so I told him, no, he can't live with me. He used my phone to call his brothers and sisters, begging them to let, let him live with them. But they all said no. He's a thief and has stolen from me many times, so there's no way I would ever let him live with me, even if he wasn't creeping me out, staring at my daughter. That's when he told me my mother was brainwashing my daughter against me. He said that she had my daughter lay down with her head on my mother's lap while they were watching TV, and my mother would be rubbing her fingers on my daughter's forehead, repeating to her over and over again, I am the only one who loves you. Your mother doesn't love you. She's the only, she only loves your baby brother, not you. My mother used to do that to me, telling me that my father didn't love me, that she was the only one who loved me. It all came back to me like a flashback. That was when I realized my mother was getting the job applications for my daughter. She was planning on taking my daughter away from me. That was the day I decided to cut my mother out of my life, and I had to try to protect my daughter from her. The whole family turned against me when I cut off contact with my mother. My brother said, you can't divorce your mother like you divorced your husband. Want to bet, pussy? Want to bet, pussy? My daughter got pregnant while she was in high school. My mother threw a baby shower for her and I was not invited. My mother told that she ruined her life, which is what your mother wanted. My mother told everyone I was invited, but that I refused to go. A lie. Everyone believed her. I became an outcast. Even my own daughter turned against me. Years later, when my mother got lung cancer from chain smoking, one of my cousins called me and said when they buried her, they would bury me as well. Even after death, nothing changed. I thank God I saved my son from that evil, but it was too late to save my daughter. I wanted to share the story to help others from losing their children to the narcissist in their life. Keep your babies away from these monsters. Donna. That's a sad story, Donna. But unfortunately, it's very typical. It's very, it's very typical. The narcissist wants to make you their servant. And when you cut them off from their supply, they lose their shit. They ruin everything and then they're gonna they're gonna find some way to get back at you. And it's usually your children. So that's why you gotta cut the toxicity out the moment you you recognize it. Otherwise you'll deal with Donna's deal dealt with and what I've dealt with and what so many other people have dealt with. The narcissist turn your children against you, make you the bad guy. And there's nothing you can do about it. So I hope that helps. Thank you for your contribution and your story, Donna. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.